I mean, it shows a hand that I can grasp something. But if I die, if I try, I die. You think I crawled in? That's my mistake there. Yeah. True. True. I shouldn't just crawl in there into the mouth of a beast. Wait for the right moment and pull out her claw. Gotcha. Yeah, this is the uterus. So let's wait for that right moment. There we go. There's a needed to wait for the right moment to pull out her claw. I was too close. There we go. Now we got a queen pincer. I guess with the pincer I could get the amber. Oh. Yep. This is just like I was playing a uh, sanitarium. The sap wells up as you pierce the ember deposit and it slowly spreads across the floor like honey. It's pungent and sweet. Sweet. Now we got some tree sap. So finally we can actually go on with the story. Gotta love those wait for the right moment then click puzzles. Yeah, I'm re usually I'm bad at those because I never understand... <laughs> I never figure it out myself that you actually need to wait for the proper moment, proper moment to click something like that, right there. Hmm. Maybe. No. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. There we go. Perfect fit, I guess. I guess is that's done. Activate. So what did we get? We got ourselves vaporized queen frenoon. Ooh, now I use it on the gas tank. Got it. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Your most proud moment in point and click gaming is figuring out the sheep puzzle yourself in the Broken Sword 2. Don't you mean Broken Sword 1, the goat in the castle? Because I don't remember any sheep in uh, Broken Sword 2. It's a goat in the first game. I can try to make it fit, but it may break. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't go in there, maybe. Do I use it on myself? I think that would break. Do I use it on the insect swarm? Take that, insects! I guess it was only effective for a few seconds. So what is that pheromone good for, if anything? Queen pheromones, dude! <laughs> what is it good for? Absolutely nothing, apparently. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have an idea. Well, that certainly killed the bugs. They should really think of a bug repellent like that. Just get yourself a fast spinning fan and then throw some pheromone into it. Oxygen levels increasing to dangerous levels. Good. We're gonna kill ourselves by over oxygizing ourselves. Oxygen levels pose the fire hazard. C sec has been notified. So now we need to figure out how to 
start the fire. Hmm. He can start the fire. <laughs> Less buggy game now. <laughs> the oxygen garden is my favorite part of any ship. Green, full, natural. Of course, you work in hydroponics. So, of course, it would be your favorite place, Tia. Oh, we got a corpse there. Frank Fleury, bartender. How did he end up there? This vine ripples like the sinews of a giant's arm. If the vine continues to grow, the metallic support slat won't last much longer. The, this bridge spans a pair of observation platforms. Donald Fryer. Okay. Draken. Crew member. Groomleg and Jen. Moisture dripping from down the walls. The condensation not collected by the pool covers the surfaces of the room, dripping down the walls and leaving the air heavy with humidity. The leaves hanging near this fan rustle softly as they sway slowly in the breeze. Verdant plant life covers nearly every surface of the room. Body engulfed, body engulfed in vines. The vines surround this body so completely that you, you're surprised that when you notice it still draws breath. Unconscious, this soul must have been resting here for a while, unless the vines grew incredibly quickly. Marcos H. Valdez III, Training Academy Personnel. Nice monocle, man. Every so often, the overflow from this collection pool spills onto the human form below, anointing its face with water. So let's see the body engulfed in vines, what it's all about. Hello? Oh, a flare. Cool. Let's get all kill ourselves again. Oh come on, they go perfectly together because we need to blow things up. It doesn't work like that. So how do I use this flare? Or rather, where do I use this flare? No, no one work. Oh, I could go down here. Okay. Eleanor Way. Ooh. Algae has left scum over the first surface of the water with the stagnant pool. The vines are thick and twisted. The thick muscular vine seems to pulse with life. If it grows anymore, the metal supports beneath it will collapse. This growth twists upward like a horned blemish bursting forth from skin. Its surface is firm but porous, different form from the vines and trees surrounding it. Like the millions of silky steel wires in a suspension cable, the vines here have braided themselves so densely that the corridor is completely blocked. The vines form a lush carpet that covers the rough metal flooring. Grayson Wendell, cook. Ingo Godau, General Science Division. So, we have... She's encrusted with fungus and vines, a human nerve center for the twisting growths around her. Appallingly, she's still alive. Don't be such a whoosh. A whoosh. A whoosh. Yeah, be a whoosh. Don't be such a wuss, John. 
Check the PDA first. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all. I simply wish his kindness had extended to Chelsea. The galley chef told me that a few of the other crew members are uncomfortable with having an ARG patient on staff. I asked if her work was in any way below standard, at which point he grew uncomfortable and admitted exactly as I thought. No, she was a superb worker, but his team were uncomfortable with her anyway. Be a genetis geneticist. And as a Christian may appear contradictory to most, but that is their burden, not mine. I believe in grace and mercy. It wasn't Chelsea's fault she was born an ARG baby. James, my ex-husband, blamed me. James wanted her terminated, and when I refused, he packed up and left. That suits me. I'd rather be without an unloving husband and father than without my beautiful child. And she is. She is beautiful, a gift from God. And for a ship full of the most supposedly forward-thinking people in the galaxy, their aversion to her condition repulses me. Tolerance and patience are virtues greatly praised by the Lord, but aboard the Grim Lake I find my source of both these virtues sorely tested. I discovered through one of my subordinates that a new shipment arrived on board a few days ago destined for Project Seed. My disapproval of the dangers of Seed are no secret. Considering the size of the shipment and the cleared attempt to cut me out of the loop regarding the delivery, I suspect some of my colleagues are trying to mask the precise nature of what is that has what it is that has arrived. And if it is as I suspect, there will be no, and I mean no, lengths I will not go in, go to in order to de de depose Dr. Mellon. I know how to read. Shut up. King Corporation is a company for the promotion of the sciences, not for the sinister schemes and unprincipled ambitions of individuals. I have moral tests. Moral issues with Kane and their weapons research. It tests my fate, but Kane's medical breakthroughs have changed the world, and my world too. It's because of Kane created research that Chelsea is even alive. This is why I do what I do. I work in genetics to find cures for my dearest Chelsea and others like her, not for money. It's my job to put things right for her. Good to know. Thank you. Well, at least this person was a uh, goody goody. Instead of just uh, scientists doing for science. I had lunch with Dr. Gray this afternoon. He's an odious little man and utterly misanthropic. But if you need somebody to talk about uh, Project C, then there are few people who give up information more easily. His ego easily outweighs his sense of confidentiality. Project leaders and project members are not allowed to discuss details of individual projects, but he can't resist himself. Nevertheless, he revealed disturbing details. I'm aware of our sample origins. We need human genetic material in order to develop cures for human beings. It's a hard truth. But there's paperwork, permission forms, and contracts that create this supply. That shipment has none of those things. They're children! Oh God, in all your great mercy, how could you let Malon, that unholy monster, do this? It's taken months, but finally I found a young cargo worker named Danica Boxer. She was referred to me by Dr. Tenshu, such a sweet girl. It seems the cargo was a combination of adults and children, all of whom were acquired through illegal channels for use in genetic research. I did not agree to this. I'll leave this place and take Chelsea with me before I spend one minute more working for a company that endorses the use of children in research. There are not enough words to describe the soulless creatures that did this. Revenge? I don't believe in revenge. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Where is she? The creatures are attacking in full force. The trees are, o are over the radio. They're dying. They're all dying. I hear them scuttle uh, through the vents. See the blood they spill and spray over the walls. Chelsea, Chelsea, oh god, please bring her to me. I'm trapped in hydroponics. Please let my little girl find me. I can see Chelsea inches from me. Lifeless. Whoops. <clears throat> 
I contemplated taking my own life as she died just before my eyes. When those creatures attacked, the crew sealed off parts of the ship and I was left trapped in hydroponics. That fungus got to me, and now it's inside, profaning my body, its nerves wrapped around my cerebral cortex. I can feel it move. I tried to move my arms, but it won't let me. It's making me watch the fungus consume my baby girl. I must watch and pray for the end to come, so that it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. Dr. Wei, your comments are most flattering. I suspect, however, that a promotion isn't forthcoming because of the lack of attention paid to our si to our section. Ignorance is frustrating. Our lack of understanding of what takes place at the top of this food chain is of great irritation to me. You do seem to be pushing relentlessly for information about this cargo, though, and I'm somewhat uncomfortable discussing it any further. I fear I may already have said too much. For the sake of your career, my dear, I'd suggest, con suggest continu discontinuing your pursuit. You're a fine geneticist and are clearly one of the most talented people on the ship. Don't let it go to waste. Sebastian. Dr. Wei, I know that you're a spiritual woman and at, I, at times receive a great deal of criticism for this, but I feel I can speak to nobody else. I'm well known for my positivity and cheerfulness, and I believe I've earned my nickname, Dr. Grey Smile. I'm haunted by what I'm hearing on this ship and wonder if perhaps it's merely induced by my own fears. Now the hell with it, I'll ask you straight out. Do you believe in ghosts? You may think that I'm being ridiculous or delusional, but I can hear things. Children crying deep in the bowels of the ship. I work many late nights and I'm convinced that I can hear crying through the vents. Where are these sounds coming from? I didn't hear rumors that before the Groom Lake were, was refitted, a group of children were brought on board and their quarters were on this deck. There was a malfunction with the heating units and, well, they all died. I don't want to seem like I'm wasting your time, but I enjoyed our talk yesterday and your open-mindedness about matters of the soul. Kind regards, Akiza. Interesting stuff. Well, let's uh, check out Eleanor here. I wonder where the baby is. Didn't see any baby. Must be somewhere in the vines. Or maybe in the fungus. Creepy. I can get you out. I can cut you free. And that won't help. I think she's beyond saving there, John. This really reminds me of uh, Sanitarium. She's kind of like Mother, but she's not. But it reminds me of Sanitarium in so many ways. Uh, maybe we can help her with this? Would you like it? How is she gonna help? I don't need you to leave. I need you to crack this flare. The oxygen will ignite. Then you will die. You're welcome. That was merciful of you, John. Just don't crack it... ...yet. Jeebus. You okay there, John? We kind of destroyed the whole level. Oh, really? suit has regulated body temperature to benchmark level. The fire systems just went haywire over here, John. What did you do? Kind of blow up the place. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. 
How about a huge uh, explosion? Fire in oxygen gardens one, three, five, six, nine. Can we get a fire extinguisher? Fire in oxygen gardens two, seven, eight. Fire suppression system activated. Warning. Fire suppression system compromised. Warning. All right. Nothing works here. Oxygen reduction has been compromised. Are the bios still intact? Kinda. Uh oh. Oh God, please don't say burn them out. Uh -oh. Just the one on this level. Yeah. <laughs> it's cause a chain reaction, John. They're all going up. We've Oops. Limit now. Powers at most. Oops. Get my daughter. And how are we gonna do that? Open this door. At least the fire was put out. Somewhat. I destroyed one level. Then go jump in it. How about you jump in it? I have nothing to do with this. You have nothing at all. You get much further. Goodbye. What are you gonna do? Stop the elevator. This lithium ion fuel cell provides high density energy storage and remove remote to wireless charging. Can I use it? Ah, it's locked. Okay. The high voltage wireless power pad provides a portable energy source for engineers and mechanics. Hmm. The floodlight illuminates the work area efficiently, giving off much needed heat. This area seems to have been undergoing a renovation. The smooth surface of the metal toolbox is punctuated by shiny metal pop rivets. Looks like this place is being expanded. The seed was always expanding. That place scares me. Thanks. Oh. Sorry. Subtle. Most of the room has been covered in heavy duty plastic sheeting. So what did we get? A high temperature slug gun. So now we have a weapon. Of sorts. A large metal scaffold spans the room's width. Hmm. At least it's not a planet side uh, elevator filled with advertising screens. Good point. Warning. Yellow thing. Well, oh. we didn't get far. Took one step and boom, dead. Uh. Where is Rebecca? Should have known that there would be a turret. That's what Melon used last time. We're out of the fire already, no need to be so dramatic in music. Besides, you're kind of loud. You're kind of very loud there, music. Looks like this place is being expanded. It was always expanding. That place scares me. Thanks. Oh. Sorry. Yet again. Subtle. 
So. Probably not a good idea. I think that'll just break it. Mm, probably not a good idea. It would be a good idea to get rid. Yes. It would be a good idea to get rid of that thing. Our personal data system. Because that's what the uh, turrets are recognizing, I think. Warning. Yellow thing hepatotoxicity is at an elevated level. Ah, because we have the toxin inside of us, and it's elevated, uh, the gun automatically shoots us. Can't move while the turret talks to you? Maybe I can. Maybe I can. Let's try. Warning. Yellow thing. Toxicity. Yes, we can run while it's talking. What do you see? You don't want to know. You don't want to know, Tia. Yeah, it's science. Seated in a chair is a woman in her mid-thirties, head shaved, limbs atrophied, demuscent in a pregnancy. She is connected to a machine that feeds and sedates her. She is trying to communicate, but her words are a little more than slurred vowels. Her throat is dry and she is clearly extremely weak. You remember seeing Renaissance-era sculptures of nuns in Holy Communion, their eyes rolled back, bodies contorted in ecstatic agony. There's a hint of that expression across this unconscious woman's face. Disconnecting these poor women from the machines and wheeling them away on this gurney would be an easy choice if it weren't for those fact for the fact that such an act would surely kill them. A wheeled stretcher to dance both the sick and injured easily, but to where? The horror of this enlarged fetus sack is matched only by the horror within its fleshy walls. The pulsing sacks bleed their nutrient mixtures onto the floor where the liquid congeals in clustered cysts. Tubes convey the nutrient mixture from the machines connected to the women over the brood against the wall. Uh... Uh, disgusting. Although it is only a wall of gauges, they cluster and protrude like the offspring birth on a Suriname toad's back. <laughs> a bloated fetus. Really? The fibrillator is used in the case of birth complications. The thing inside the incubator is an anathema of to nature. The poor creature should not exist, and what life it shows is reluctant and painful. <laughs> nice to watch and listen to while eating. <laughs> Defibrillator. And it looks like it's fully charged. Good. We can use it on something. I don't know what. This terminal appears to be unlocked and ready for use. Project Seed revised, the version 6 updated by Dr. G. Mellon, King Corporation, all rights reserved. I'll keep that in mind. Copyright is tough. Got it. For the eyes of King Board of Directors only, Seed is an attempt to create the ultimate super soldier by, in simple terms, activating junk strands of human DNA. Over the years, the human genome has shed or made dormant certain strands of its own DNA sequence for various evolutionary reasons. Professor Salam Gerund, 
observed that certain dormant parts of these genes were not so much junk as they were potential, that is, genetic information contained in completely supplemented by a dominant gene. Professor Gerund and engineered an early life form based on this original theory by introducing these identified genetic strands in the early stages of embryo formation. The initial concept was intriguing, but his ultimate result was a group of uncontrollable animalistic creatures. Version 6 of this proposal is to update these same dormant genes into the human makeup by use of genetic splicing, thereby introducing desirable physical and mental characteristics over a generation to produce fast learning, hard to kill, and utterly ruthless soldiers. So they were making genome soldiers and they're trying to create Big Boss, I guess. And from there, Liquid and Solid Snake. Her vitals are re are steady, certain uh, hormonal levels are extremely high, but I'm countering this with the judicious uh, administration of the present in each case. Survival chances, very high. She's young, healthy, and there are no signs of any infections or complications capable of disrupting the birth. Recommendations, keep under observation, prepare for phase 1 treatment. The su subject, despite her promising early progress, appears to be failing. Supposition is that she cannot withstand the foreign genetic structure that is being fused into her body. Typical signs of rejection are being displayed. Recommendations Observe for an additional 24 hours. If there are no signs of improvement, then termination and disposal of the patient is recommended. The subject is progressing well. As well as being aesthetically attractive, she has all of the other genetic traits required. Initial concerns about her suitability, voiced by Dr. Mallon chiefly due to the number of her sexual partners, have been proved unfounded. She will be a perfect carrier. The hybrid DNA is fusing to my satisfaction. Apart from a small amount of pain, her body appears to be coping with the adjust adjustments. I have prescribed her a steady dose of anesthetic to keep her subdued and comfortable. Since delivery, hybrid subject 302 has been kept inside an incubator. Due to its respiratory distress, assisted breathing is required. Cardiac arrest has occurred, and the use of automated external defibrillators has been required to revive the child. I deduce that the conditions and sickliness are due to the late molecular bonding between hybrid and host DNA in the mother. A weak nervous system is also highly likely in this case, but the subject's regenerative abilities can be stimulated with steroids. Conclusion, the child is weak, but will survive. The mother is suitable for continued reading. Kind of, uh, kind of icky when they talk about uh, human subjects, mothers, that they are used for breeding. That's just sick. And all for science. Science? Of course. Don't you know anything about science? This Lithiana... Uh, well, let's see. Can I do anything with these pregnant women? These women must have families and lives. Well, they used to have them. do anything for them now. Soon this ship will run out of oxygen. They won't be in pain for much longer. She tried. In this place is more torture than anyone should. Then kill them if you're so inclined. I need help. I'm gonna help you. Just close your eyes. Gosh, little baby, don't you cry. We took bandages off her. Okay. Don't worry. I'm here. I'm gonna help you. Soon you'll be out of here. This is just a bad train. Oh, it's more than that. It's a full-on satanic nightmare. <sighs> it's the same kind of log that the other one has. Maybe if it... I think I need some kind of a tool to open those with. Well, let's go back here and run to the other side. Huh. 
Okay, more nightmare fuel for everybody, yes! This must be where diagnostics where experiments are reviewed. The screens are replete with analytical data about the objects around you. The results of various tests to which you don't understand flash across the screen in a blur. And also, that is one high-pitched uh, sound there. The human appears to be a host for the genetic hybrid growing out of it. Birth was clearly messy and painful. Pulsating mass of flesh and bone, a hideous agglomeration of flesh and bone. Limbs ju jut haphazardly from its mass. It sports a human head that gurgles out of sync with the pulsing of its other parts. A recent blood discharge hints that this life form isn't viable in the long term. Two bodies can join at the head to share one brain. It doesn't seem that the brain is up to the task of coordinating movement between the two bodies. This appalling distended creature appears to be a hybrid, although what is unknown? It is not completely human, that much is absolutely certain. One of the failed experiments, a lump of organs held together by wrinkled skin, bone poke through the flesh in spots. Do medical schools ever feature bodies that so grossly exhibit their internal organs? Yeah, they used to, but they did open uh, autopsies, and in schools they still do, I guess. They have to learn to do autopsies at some point, so they open up bodies. In the aftermath of this body's evisceration, you can't tell whether its legs were removed or whether it ever had any. And also, that high-pitched sound is really starting to hurt my ears. The corpse of a creature hangs preserved. It may have been a twin. Two heads are fused together and a pair of spines meets. Each spine wraps around the other like a gnarled mountain range. A standard looking human skeleton. At least something is normal in here. This is the skeleton of what must have been a very large infant. How would you know? Are you a doctor, John? Yeah, I thought you were a teacher. Test results flash across the screen. Dr. Clifford Backman. Okay. January 16. They said I'd never make it to 60. Ha! Hey, five, you feckers. Old and still cooking with gas. The three bastard kids, and I outlived them all. Okay, so I was young when I had them. Those girls never even knew I was the father, of course. I had to switch a DNA sample so they didn't know the little shits were mine. I'm too old now for all that, but I. But you never completely lose your eye for ladies. I might have false teeth, Dr. Mellon, but I'm no moron. For the good of humanity, I'm a sociopath and alleged rapist of women. But your little speech to the crew was less sincere than anything I could say with a straight face. At least you know how to turn a blind eye whenever I have to get rid of troublesome subjects, right, Mellon? The new gas for the chambers is working splendidly. An improved kill rate of 60% on the old formula. I've watched those poor fuckers writhe and die. We have a viewing window now, so just so we can make sure it's done. If I were a moral man, I'd call it perverse. It's lucky for a Project C that I couldn't give a shit. I thrive when I don't have to answer to everyone in, with a conscience. This will not do, not at all. I need more subjects. The rejection ratio of the DNA splicing is stratos stratospheric. So not only do I need more bodies, but I need better ones. They bring me imports and strays, but the best results are achieved with crew members. One cannot prey too often on those, of course, not, no matter the need. My chosen ones were always those who wouldn't be missed. The furnaces are inadequate for my disposal requirements. I'm told they're so hot that they could destroy dark matter. They seem slow to respond when burning flesh though, and the smell is hardly pleasant either. It reminds me of that injured dog that I found as a little boy growing up in Missouri. 
They look at me with a pleading look, the kind of sick patient gives a doctor they trust absolutely. Naturally, I stomped on the mongrel's, mongrel's head. It was a mercy. There are too many in society who have a similarly damaged disposition. It's a kindness to snuff out their worthless lives. I must get more pathway. That little prick DeSantos is usually more than forthcoming with its ingredients, but he says his own suppliers are having problems. I know you, DeSantos. I know you're not a real doctor. I know the kind. I have five PhDs and can tell when men have been hired for their instincts rather than their knowledge. Meanwhile, the cutting and splicing continues. Oh, and Charlotte, we all know about your little experiment, you stupid bitch. First she kills her patient by accidentally exposing him to a lethal virus, and then she goes gaga for him. That's the sort of beautiful incom <coughs> incompetence that slays me. I spent years perfecting the art of the kill, making a murder appear a mishap, and she went and did it all completely by accident. What perfect nonsense! I held the subject down today and used my surgical hammer to cave in his windpipe. Then I gouged out his eyes and tried to rip his jaw from its socket. My goodness, what an outburst. I'm becoming careless. I need more pathway. Dr. Mellon is starting to worry that my tendencies cannot be controlled. He need not worry. I'm still focused on seed. Seed is still just that, a seed. But this chrysalis will soon break open and blossom. The successfully bred homo novi wait in their containment cells, while their unsuccessful brethren reduced to a viral mulch that's already breached the containment seals of the ship grow. Its genetic makeup might be a little more than trash, but it is astoundingly tenacious. I have to, res I have to respect that which kills with such efficiency. Homo novi, so it's new human, that's what they call this thing that they've been making. I woke up in the emergency room today. Somebody found me on the stairs. I can't remember much. What I do know is that both my fucking legs are up in casts. I better get comfortable because Dr. Graham says I'll be in here for at least a month. We die as the Novi cut us down. But I'm not ready to be replaced by a new species. Our creations are impressive, but I don't share Malin's fanaticism uh, for what is happening here. I must try to make sure one of the lifeboats is available for me. I shame there was not another for the delectable young thing. What's her name? Callister? I would have liked to have her around when this ship was going to hell. She's dead, however. How unfortunate. I may be old, but I'll tear anyone who tries to stop me from leaving a part at the limbs. I have survived police investigations, court cases, vengeful spouses, and idealistic lab hands. I will gut any shit back trying to prevent my escape. And that includes you, Melon. I will jab out your eyeballs and eat them before I submit to you. Ooh. Quite the character, that guy. Old sociopath. Somehow being able to survive so long. <laughs> so how about this PDA? Marvin DeSantos. Huh. Man, that bitch from shipping won't get off my back. You fuck a girl real good and she just comes crawling back. If she doesn't get out of my hair, I'll have her moved off ship. Dr. Mallet is a prick, but he looks after me like that. I gotta say, being on Project Seed is awesome, man. Okay, so we gotta do some pretty noxious shit. But in exchange, I got a lot of protection and honorary title. Dr. DeSantos. I like it. Dr. Mallon knows about my contacts and private cargo that arrives on board, and I know he hates it, but there ain't nobody else prepared to work under Dr. Backman. <coughs> that guy is one twisted fuck, and also one of my best customers. I get imports, sure, but my own private lab is what manufactures Backman's pathway shit. Funny, I never realized how dependent these smartasses of science are on drugs. Personally, never touch this stuff. You gotta have your wits about you, man, especially around here. Oh, Dr. Williams. Charlotte. I never would have figured that uptight woman was a slut, but holy hell, she just gave me the right of my fucking life. Who'd have thought it? Slinky lace under that lab coat of hers, and for a woman in her mid 40s, a body that makes you want to get on your knees and howl at the moon. Against the table, pressed up against the weird port windows on top, underneath, like a freaking rattlesnake. Of course, she's Looney Tunes. Probably thinks I'm her dead husband or something, like I care, as long as she keeps coming to me to fulfill her needs. 
crazy but smart and she has no idea how much I know about her little project. I saw the details. People just think I'm a smack talking smartest but I've been training on the Groom Lake since I was 16. I studied chemistry and genetics, aced all of it too. She thinks I'm too stupid to understand. Thinking I could have gotten myself in too deep here. The drug thing was fine but this whole industrial espionage thing is kind of freaky. I don't think Dr. Mellon knows. I know Lincoln, wa Lincoln watches me with an eagle eye, but he can't know for sure. If he did, he'd eject my ass from the ship with the rest of the failed hybrids. But goddamn, the money is good. I earned my year's salary by sending some info to Black Star Industries. My content gave me more money than I could conceive for leaking one report. One. I met the guy with while I was on leave. He was a smug dickhead who somehow knew what I did, and then he flashed the cash. I've got no loyalties to the company, I know, and I know how Dr. Mellon treats loyal staff. That guy can turn on a dime when it suits him. I've heard of weird shit going on down in the decks below, and Seed has me feeling it'll soon be time to get the hell out of Dodge, pronto. One or two more reports might just give me what I need. Nobody knows about my little acts of espionage, but who'd care? This ship is falling apart. Some of those fucked up things that Beckman and Malin made are on the prowl. I stashed away my cash as soon as I heard things were going wrong, but money ain't gonna make a spit's worth of difference if we all get killed. Malin's taking all this way too calmly. Actually, I'd say he's enjoying all this. He came into the lab this morning, he still makes us all report to the lab and was grinning the whole damn time, his eyes all red like he was coming down from a high. That guy does not need drugs for a high, his general fucked upness is what he writes. And here was me thinking Backman was the crazy one. It's just us. Oh god, not even Backman's around now. Charlotte was dragged away from the, to the labs a few days ago, we're sealed off from the other decks. I reckon it's only a matter of time before Malin decides to do something about me too. I've been living on this ship for years, I know about hidden passages that even Malin doesn't know about. I'll get over to the communications area and let off a signal. Hopefully they'll get to us before Dr. Malin finds out. Apparently, apparently Malin found out first. Oh <sighs> boy. And also I did take... Yeah, it's still there. I did take these off because I couldn't stand that high-pitched noise anymore. I'm sure most of you have might have already, you know, silenced the uh, live stream because of it. This is the purpose of the Groom Lake. This is not on Earth. I can't see it, so they don't care. But if they knew, so what? Good point, there. So what? If people knew. Would they still care? I mean, could they even do anything? Well, of course, but it would take time. But it would be too late as well. The scanning base glow in the eager light. This read out tracks factors like equipment, feedback and resistance thresholds. The scanner, pulsing with phosphorus light, awaits its next patient. So what can I do here? The canister of liquid nitrogen feeds the surrounding specimen containers. Seems like I do I can do something here. Ah, I got the canister. Cool. So let us save the game here. Because I have forgotten to do some saving. Let's check out these terminals then. Let's see what we got. Hybrid Reject 811. A highly unusual form of rejection such as has not been observed before manifested in this hybrid. It is entirely possible that the mutagenic compounds used to synthesize the hybrid DNA was faulty in this particular instance. Usually with any rejection there is a sign of initial bonding and then a breakdown, but in this case there was absolutely no bonding attempted whatsoever. 
Given the thoroughness with which we create the DNA, I suspect that the centrifuge machine for this particular batch was faulty. Repair and maintenance check for of the machine is ordered immediately. Recommendation, destroy what remains and also destroy the fetus. Or apparently you didn't do that. Because it's still there. Hybrid reject C. Subject died during birth. It can only be surmised that death was due to a failing in the host, as all reports and tests leading up the birth showed no signs of fetal defect. Upon further investigation of the woman's medical history, it was noted that she experienced complications when giving birth to a child previously. This host was not would not have been used had this been highlighted. In light of her medical history, I now assume this was the cause of the fetal distress and death of the subject. Note host is being kept alive and has undergone one transfusion. Revoke host's life support order and dispose of body with hybrid reject C. What else do we have here? During the autopsy of hybrid 604, there were signs of renal failure. It appears the kidneys were unable to process the amino acids required for the breakdown of nutrients. The damage to the liver, stomach and intestines show the same degenerative patterns. Reason, it is possible that the report of the mother giving birth three months prior was in error. Further reports regarding the failure of mutagenic compounds will be finalized later. And also, nice uh, imagery. So I need to get one of those power things and it'll make the uh, gun shoot at it. Okay. So that's how I get rid of the uh, turret. I need one of those. I need one of these power cells. At least it seems like it. That's what it looked like on the uh, note. Yeah, that's what it looks like shooting a power cell with the uh, with the turret. Okay. If they were more open, this wouldn't happen. Open to who? The people, governments, other corporations. What cost? A bit of our humanity, I suppose. Well, all of this has been uh, due to some uh, cost of humanity. Hello, Fairbite. I saw you. I doubt it can speak. It's a wonder that some of these things are still alive. Tenacious little feckers, aren't they? Medical equipment turning on by itself, I guess? Next time on Stasis. Hey, I'm here! The <laughs>